Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Konnichiwa. Welcome to the Tokyo 2020 press conference for cycling BMX racing. After today's competition here at the Ariaki Urban Sports Park. I'd like to welcome and congratulate today's medalists. Gold medalist Nick Kimmon from the Netherlands. Silver medalist Kai White from Great Britain. And bronze medalist Carlos Ramirez from Colombia. Before we open to questions, let me give you some statistics about today's final results. Nick Kiman is the first Olympic gold medal winner in BMX from the Netherlands. Netherlands joins France as the only NOC to have won Olympic gold medals in all cycling disciplines, BMX, road, track and mountain bike. Kai White wins the first medal for Great Britain in men's BMX racing. Great Britain has now won medals in men's events in all four cycling disciplines, BMX, road, track, mountain bike. It won its first medals in BMX and mountain bike at the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. Carlos Ramirez claimed his second Olympic bronze medal in BMX racing after bronze in 2016. He joins Maris Strombergs from Latvia as two gold medals and the only men to have won two medals in men's BMX racing. Now, I'd like to open the floor to your questions. If you'd like to ask a question in the room, please make your way to the microphone at the back of the room and introduce yourself and the media outlet you are working for. Hi, uh, James Gearbrandt from The Times. Um, question for Kai. Uh, Kai, congratulations. Uh, I know that you're from Peckham in South London. Um, I wondered if you could talk about how proud you are not only to have won a silver medal for Team GB, but to be taking one back to Peckham and also how much the community there and the people around you helped you to achieve this dream. Um, do you know what? It's been, it's been a crazy journey uh, being from Peckham. It's not, it's not the worst, but it's not the best places to grow up. Um, yeah, I've had mentors at like CK, my dad being the second coach under CK of Jason, um, had both my older brothers racing at, as well, being from Peckham, and it's just been it's been a great journey being from being from Peckham. I started off from Peckham, yeah, started from Peckham in like what 2003, um, left Peckham in 2017 to move to Manchester, and uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been a grind ever since. How much will it mean to to people in Peckham? Do you think? Could you say that again, please? How much will it mean to people in Peckham? Uh, I saw them on the screen after and. I, I couldn't even hear what anyone was saying because they was all shouting. Um, and I couldn't even talk because I had like a crying voice. Um, so yeah, I, I couldn't really talk. Um, but yeah, it, it, mean, it means the world to British BMX. We've never had a medal. We've got one now. Well, we've got two now. Um, so history has been made, uh, first of all. And then second of all, both riders from South London. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, history has been made. Any other questions, please make your way to the microphone in the middle of the room. I'm Sam Price from Touchline. Question for Nick. Uh, absolutely crazy week for you, well documented with the collision with the official and the injury to your knee. Um, just describe that roller coaster of, of emotions and, and physical challenges that you've, that you've had to go through in the past few days. Well, like you said, this week has been an emotional roller coaster. Um, after I hit the official, I thought you know, my, my dream was over basically. But after speaking with the doctors and getting an MRI scan, um, we realized it would be possible to race. It wouldn't be comfortable, but it would be possible. 
So I skipped the last three, three track sessions just to, to give my knee the most rest possible. And like yesterday, it was just all about surviving, making it through to today. And like I was mentally prepared that today was going to be really, really tough. Like on this level, even if you're physically in the best shape ever, it's still tough. But knowing how my knee felt, I, yeah, I was just mentally prepared to struggle. And um, yeah, made it through. In the last semi, I got passed by, by Kai on the line. But other than that, I felt very good. And then in the final, I just yeah, tried to not think too much about all, all the stuff happening around me, like the, the helicopter flying out for a live stream, and millions of people at home watching, uh, an Olympic medal on the line. I just yeah, stuck to my job, realized I, I'm raising seven of my friends, like I've been doing my whole life. Just keep it simple and, and just try to beat them like, I, like I've done since I'm seven. So yeah, it's been um, like the, the last Olympic cycle has been a roller coaster, but um, yeah, the last four days are a story itself. And just a quick question for Carlos as well. What does it mean uh, to win this medal for Ecuador? And were you inspired uh, by Richard Carapaz on the, on the first day? Well, first of all, it's Colombia, sorry for that, but <laughs> don't worry. But actually, I've been ins inspired by Rigo and all the Colombians racing. Uh, Rigo did uh, an amazing job in the, both the cycling race and the uh, road time trial. Uh, we got a silver medal in the um, Olympic weightlifting. So it's been, it's been great. It's actually amazing to be able to give Colombia another medal. As you guys know, it's like we fight for those medals and we just give everything to the line and fight for it. We're, we're fighters from Colombia. We just come and do our best every single time. So I'm really happy to be here, real happy to actually leave my country again on the podium and hopefully we do a lot. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't worry. Hi guys, congratulations. Um, Murad Ahmed from the Financial Times. Um, I was hoping all of you could just discuss some of the dangers that you face out there. I mean, we saw Connor Fields in a pretty brutal crash and we all hope he's okay. But, you know, you guys know that this is one of the risks of when you go out there. So how do you get that out of your mind to perform as amazingly as you, uh, as you guys have? Um. For me, for me personally, I, I said to myself, I'm ready to, for war. I, don't, I think if you, if you have fear in the back of your head that you're going to crash, um, you might as well not get on the gate because it's BMX. Um, you, there's a crash at probably every race. Uh, and it, it can, at any time, it can be you. So, yeah, for me, I'm, I, I'm not scared. I just get on the gate and do my thing. And if I crash, then you get back up. If you can't, you rest and you come back again. Yeah, like I said, I think we all know that there are risks to our sport, but I think at the end of the day, we just love our sport so much that like when we, when we have an injury, the first thing we think about is when can we get back on the track? Um, so yeah, I think we all love our sport too much and, and there are risks, like there are, are risks in any sports, but I think the biggest thing is just that the, yeah, the passion we have and, and because it's just so much fun to, to go fast and to to jump and, and to race other riders. So I think basically it's the same thing as them. It's we know the risk. We know what we're battling for. We know every time you get on the gate, there's a risk, and it could be any of us crashing like he did. Uh, I was in that semi, and he had a pretty hard slam. I heard it like I was just next to him. So. I think all of us have been through that situation. We've been in major crashes. We've got major injuries for sure. And we just get on that gate, enjoy it. And as Kai said, we just go out to work. Because if you see at the races, it's, there's a big war going on. Everyone's just putting the elbows out and just actually trying to cover and be the first one to the finish line. So it's just enjoying. We love the sport, as Nick said. And we just got to keep pushing keep pushing the boundaries, keep pushing our limits, and we know anything can happen.
And the only thing I want to add is that, that like Connor's the defending gold medalist. Like I haven't seen his crash. Uh, like I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen a video. I just hope he's okay. Um, I think he's been a, a great ambassador for the sport, and like I hope I, I can be as well. But um, yeah, for me, it, it's sad that he he wasn't able to defend his um, his gold medal. Like he basically qualified for the final, but he he, he had enough points to qualify, but. He couldn't be there, so um, like I said, I hope he's okay, and I can't wait to uh, battle with Connor again soon. And just one last one from me. How weird has it been performing in these games? I mean, other athletes in other sports have been talking about just struggling to perform without crowds, with, with all the protocols and everything. You know, we've heard about Simone Biles and the mental stress attached to it. Have you guys felt any, any of that out there, or, or, or know of other athletes who, who found it quite difficult to to be here in these conditions? Um, the crowds for me wasn't really a, a problem. Um, it's always great to have the support, but yeah, just treat it as training. Like you don't have support in training. So um, yeah, we just got on the gate and done our thing. Um, can I just add as well, hopefully kind of heals up. Um, but yeah, I feel like yeah, it was just like another training day. Um, and yeah, obviously Neek was the best in training today. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, guys. Any more questions? If not, I'd like to conclude the press conference for today. Thank you for everyone for taking part, and thank you to our medalists. Thank you.